episode number 12. You are listening to the More Than a Lawyer podcast with your host, Janine Esbrand. I'm here to help lawyers and mums to thrive in their careers and motherhood. I share tips, strategies and inspirational conversation with awesome women to help you reduce the struggle in your juggle. Hello and welcome to the show. I hope you are well. It is great to be here with you today. So today's a solo show. I'm going to be talking about what it means to lean in on your career. I recently read the book Lean In by Cheryl Stansberg and well, I say I read it, but I actually listened to it on Audible. So I don't know about you, but finding time to sit down and read can be a challenge when you are working and you're looking after a baby and you have a whole load of other projects going on. So now I listen to books on audio. I uh, can listen to them when I'm driving or when I'm doing chores. uh, And it's a great way to work my way through my reading list. So if you are finding that you haven't got time to read and you would like to have more time to read, I would suggest checking out audiobooks. I know nothing really replaces turning the pages on a book and reading, but it's better to um, listen to them if you're not getting the chance to read at all. So I would suggest you do that. Now, going back to Lean In, Cheryl Stansberg is the COO of Facebook and previously she worked for Google. She is a very accomplished career woman and also a mother and she has a lot of insight and knowledge that she shares in the book. Um, She also delivered an interesting TED talk on uh, why we have too few women leaders which you may want to check out. Um, And her mission is to really encourage women on the path to leadership. She talks about life as a working mother and some of the pitfalls that many women encounter when they are continuing their career um, after motherhood and generally. So um, I found it to be a really interesting read. Since the book was published, it's received a lot of attention. Um, Some of it has been a bit controversial. Some people have said that her approach is not realistic for everybody, given her background and her status. And others have said, you know, she fails to um, address issues that women may face that that Shell hasn't faced because her book very much draws on her own experiences. Now, whatever you your thoughts are on the book, I think there are some really good, um, actionable things that we can take away from it. So in this episode, I'm going to be jumping into three areas that she talked about that I think are very useful, and I hope you find them useful too. So the first point that I wanted to talk about was her approach to your career progression. So she suggests that instead of viewing your career as a ladder and viewing it as trying to climb the corporate ladder, we should look at it like a jungle gym. So you know the jungle gym that you have when you go to the park and children are able to just climb up on them and they they have many twists and turns and there are many ways to get on the jungle gym and there are many ways to make it to the top. And so I thought that this was a really, really good approach and a good way to look at it because when you're starting out in your legal career or in any other career you kind of have a view of what climbing the proverbial corporate ladder should look like and what you should be doing and what roles you should be taking and what you should be striving for next so that you can eventually work your way to the top of the ladder but the problem with this approach is that it doesn't really leave room for personal growth Um, for a change in outlook or unexpected opportunities that might come up because when you start at the bottom of the ladder you may be in one place in terms of your worldview and in terms of your experience and what you're trying to achieve and as you start to um, work and you your life unfolds and you become a mother or you get married your your um, values and the way that you see things shift so if you just stay on the same ladder it's not necessarily going to mean it's your your um, path is aligned with your current values or um, how opportunities have unfolded in in your in your career or in your organization whereas if you look at it like a jungle gym um, you're more open to possibilities outside of the linear view of this is the path and I must stay on this path Um, and so I think you should absolutely take this approach and really think of the fact that 
so many people achieve success and people achieve success at different rates and in different ways and everybody will jump on the jungle gym at a different time or a different point but they will still have the opportunity to make it to the top um some may take longer and some may have an express route but they still make it to the top and the top is the view from the top is going to be different depending on where you stand on that jungle gym just as um, your interpretation or your view of what success means to you is going to differ from somebody else so um, I would I, I love this approach and I'm definitely going to be sharing it with clients and, and other people more so I hope you you can take this on board okay and the, the second thing I wanted to share and um, that I that I thought was really interesting was her advice around being more open to taking career risks so studies have been done and she talked about those studies in her book um, about the stark difference between the woman's approach and the man's approach to a new role and when I say new role I mean a role that they haven't done before the the studies show that if offered an opportunity a woman is likely to worry that she doesn't have the right skills that she needs for the role or the experience to execute properly uh, whereas a man's response is more likely to be well I haven't done that before but I can learn um, and so Cheryl's really encouraged us in this book to consider that it is your ability to learn and contribute quickly that matters and that women should shift from thinking I am not ready to do that to I want to do that and I will learn by doing it. If you think about whenever you've had to start a new role, when you're within a new organisation, even if you've done the role before, there's a lot of learning that you have to do to get up to speed with the practices and and the way things are done in that organisation. And in the same way that you buckle down and you learn and you grow into a role in a different organization is the same approach can be taken when it comes to adopting a slightly different role to what you're used to doing so it's a great encouragement to us to realize that although you might not have experience with something you can always learn and you can always expand and you can always adapt you just have to give yourself permission and give yourself room and space to say yes I I, I don't have it all together or I don't have all the answers but I can learn or I can find a person that's going to be able to share how I can improve my skills in that area. So it's really it's a really different way of thinking of things. And again, it opens up opportunities because then you don't limit yourself to say, well, I can only go back to doing this particular role, especially if you're thinking about moving from full time work to part time work and you're worried that, you, that there aren't that many opportunities. You can think laterally and think, OK, what could I take? my current skills and do maybe it's not exactly the same role but what can I transfer my skills to do even if I haven't done it before so I really encourage you to think um, broader when it comes to the skills that you have and what you're able to achieve because you're awesome and you've done a lot and you've built up a lot of experience and you've had a lot of exposure and so no doubt what you have is going to be valuable to um, a role an organization um, a, a next opportunity within your within where you're currently working so don't kind of close the door on yourself before uh, you need to and it's worth saying also that if someone within your organization or another organization approaches you for a role that doesn't quite match your experience they can obviously see the potential in you and can see that you would be able to do the role so don't turn it down because you don't feel ready embrace it and then grow into the role and the third thing I want to share that I'm definitely a fan of is having a career dream or vision I have talked before on the podcast about um, the importance of starting with the end in mind and thinking about where you're trying to get to and Cheryl talks about having a long-term career dream or vision and then she also talks about having an 18 month plan because when you have the long term dream, you know where you're trying to get to in the long term. But giving yourself that shorter time span, um, it, it doesn't have to be 18 months. It could be a year. It could be two years. But having a shorter time span means that you get more focused on what it is you're trying to do right now. And it also helps you to um, think 
okay, if I take this position or if I do this role or if I if I try and go for this promotion or if I try and do this uh, particular thing now, is this fitting into the bigger picture? Is this getting me one step closer to where I'm trying to get to in, in the grand scheme of things? So it's, it's, it helps you to stay focused and helps you to perhaps um, assess opportunities, not just in a vacuum but but seeing them as part of a of a, of a jigsaw puzzle and, and a bigger plan so I would definitely say make sure that you think about where you're trying to head in your career but you don't have to get caught up on it and think oh no I don't have a long-term plan I don't know um, but just give it some thought and when you do come up with what that what that goal is and what that plan is just know that it it can be flexible that you can revisit it as as circumstances change as you change you may want to go back and think okay let me switch that up a bit but um having having the goals there and the short term and the longer term goals are definitely going to help you to to stay focused and feel like you know where it is that you're heading in your career okay so those are the three tips that I drew from the book there is so much more in there so if you are interested in reading it I would um, head over to the show notes at www.lightboxcoaching.com forward slash episode 12 where I have shared the link to um, the book so you can check it out yourself I absolutely love diving into new books I love reading I love learning I am a personal development geek I know you probably love reading too, so it would be great to hear from you. What's on your reading list? What have you been reading lately? What are you loving? Um, Head over to the Facebook group at lightboxcoaching.com forward slash community and let me know what you are loving. I just wanted to share with you a bit about next week's show. So if you are a lover of reading as I am and you are thinking about how to get your little ones to enjoy reading as much as you do, because it's really important to start early. I would say join me next week as I speak to Tara Clancy of Nurturing Literacy and she is giving us some tips on how you can encourage a love of reading in your children from a young age all the way up to teenage years. So I it was a great conversation with her. We talk about reading, we talk about a whole load of other things. So please do check that out next week when it comes out on Monday. If you subscribe to the show, you can make sure that you don't miss any. Uh, You don't have to remember to check them out. They will just come up in your podcast feed. So make sure you subscribe. And if you enjoy these episodes, please head over to iTunes and leave a review so that more women just like you can hear the show and join in the conversation. Okay, so that's all from me today. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode. The More Than A Lawyer podcast features music from Ben Sound.